What's up, guys? I'm gonna go over this new optic I've got for my uh, Smith & Wesson uh, AR-15. It's a uh, six hour Romeo 5 XDR. It's a compact red dot sight. It's a one by 20 millimeter um, half MOA uh, adjustments on there. It's got a 65 MOA uh, red circle with a two MOA uh, red dot. So you can see the uh, 65 MOA circle on the outside and you also get the uh, two MOA dots. So it's selectable between the two. That's what the XDR or uh, the DR stands for. <clears throat> The, uh, the features for this are, are pretty nice. Um, you get the, uh, the MOTAC motion activated illumination control, which basically it powers it on when it senses any kind of motion. It also powers it off, I think, after about 120 minutes. Um, you, it, it also has a uh, two, uh, you get a, a 1.41 inch absolute co witness mount standard on, on the body. Uh, you also get a spacer to bring it up to a 1.63 inch, it's a one third lower uh, co-witness mount, and that's the mount that I'm going to go with on mine. Um, but yeah, it's the the reviews for this are really nice. It's cast from aircraft grade aluminum. Uh, it's really rugged. I've got seen videos of guys blasting it so with shotguns and, and everything and freezing and everything, so it seems to hold it up. So let's check out what's inside the box. So you can see you get your uh, installation. Uh, it's got some, you know, basic how you install the mounts, different spacers, battery. You get a lens cleaning and your silica packet. Keep your electronics nice and moisture free. There's the uh, optic itself. There's the spacer with the attached hardware. Um, you'll need these longer screws if you want to use the spacers in there. I'm gonna go with the lower uh, one one third co-witness to keep my irons out of the, the side picture from the red dot itself. That way we just focus on the red dot. So basically with having the lower thirds is puts my iron sights down in the blow. All I have to do is focus on the red dot or the 65 MOA circle. And uh, when I want to use the iron sights to just get a lower uh, cheek hold on the buttstock and there you go. That way you don't have to aim with everything. Have your iron sights on there with a reticle, which can sometimes just it can just be a lot, especially when you've only got 20 millimeter um, lens that you're looking through. You can see the uh, spacer basically attaches in between the body and the existing mount. So pop off the bikini covers here so you can get a picture of the idea of the uh, optic itself, the coating on there. I believe they call that the red notch coating. Um, it's good light transmission and it's it's really clear uh, sight picture. It's kind of hard to pick up through looking through the back of the camera, but I've looked at it outside and it's really nice. I don't see any kind of uh, uh, fish eye or anything. Which you shouldn't, you know. With uh, one thing I did like about the X and the XDR is the flush mount um, turret on there. You know, on the on the original Romeo. Uh, Romeo 5 it had uh, caps that you would take off the caps and you flip the cap upside down and you turn the turret but Those could be potential snag points and I was also looking to the uh, spark AR or Vortex spark uh, AR and I liked it a lot. It was a really tough choice between this and that uh, um, Optic, but I did like the, the AAA battery on there You can find those things everywhere and you get about the same on this particular one you get 50,000 hours on this optic because of the MOTAC technology on there. So that's just as much as a C2032 or whatever that battery is, uh, but a more common um, battery, AAA battery. There, and this is how you would adjust it with a, it's got a little tool kit um, that comes with a little blade that goes inside there and it adjusts the windage and the elevation. Um, the illumination buttons are on the top and that's really all there is to it. Really nice, uh, snag-free, low-profile um, optic. So also included in here is a AAA battery. It does come with it. And this is a little tool that comes with a uh, Torx 10. And on the other end is your optic, uh, is your uh, turret um, adjustment. So basically stick that in the turret, turn it, and there you go. 
should set it one time and sh this this optic's going to live on my rifle so it should be a set it and forget it kind of thing let's get this thing mounted up so this is a spacer and the uh, extended screws that come with it the torx 10 uh, screws that come with it with medium loctite already ready to go so you don't have to worry about that i did not have a torque um, wrench with me to to measure this small of, of uh, torque application so i have to get one but i'm just going to loosely fit these for now uh, well fairly loose you know still snug not torqued down just so i can get a uh, see how it mounts on the rifle put the spacer in there so here i'll set up the camera and i'll try to get um, as best i can to kind of focus in on the on the reticle, obviously the autofocus can't focus in on something that intense, so I have to manually focus in there. But you can see this is the uh, two MOA um, dot, and then I'll change it here. Once you see the uh, 65 MOA circle with two MOA dot in the middle, I'll change this to the 65 MOA circle. Uh, let me try to refocus here on. There you go. So this is um, it's a really clear, um, nice, crisp um, projection. And um, yeah, I don't have any parallax issues. The uh, eye relief, I think it's infinite eye relief. So it didn't matter how close or how far away I was from the cheek hold on there to the optic itself. You can see the different adjustment settings on there. You can see it's very intense. The camera doesn't really pick it up. I could go down even lower for the night vision, but the, the camera would have such a hard time even picking that up. It is insta installed on the rifle. And um, I gotta say, it looks really nice. Um, I really like the, the design, the shape of this uh, optic. And um, you can see that basically the lower thirds with the, with the spacer on there puts the irons you know, in the lower third looking through here. And I'll get some um, get some camera angles from the rear to kind of give you an idea of that so looking from the rear here I'll try to explain or it's obviously I've, I've got the camera just right above the butt sock so it's not ideally where my eye would be but to kind of give you an idea of the lower thirds um, it puts the sight and the irons um, in the lower third and you would basically just be looking through seeing just the reticle is what you would you would aim and, and um, Go in there and uh, sight in, zero in your sights. And if you do need to look through, through the uh, irons, you can still do that. You just have to get a lower cheek hold on it as if you're looking for the irons. Just a little bit higher cheek hold on with uh, a lower one third. So it's a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more uh, stuff that's out of your way. And uh, yeah, I'll have some, some more updates uh, once I take this thing to the range. So here I am at the indoor range, and uh, I gotta say this red dot's really nice. I was able to adjust the lighting on there to account for various ranges and lighting conditions, and uh, just zero in the sight right here, 25 yards. And uh, the groupings weren't too bad. I uh, needed a little bit of adjustment on there, so this was uh, a little more trial and error. A lot of ammo spent today, and just um, zero in the sight. I did both supported and uh, freestanding. Uh, mainly did a lot of supported early on, getting the uh, sight dialed in and zeroed in. It's at 25 yards, and uh, later on just playing around at 50 yards freestanding. Not too bad. Great sight for uh, I think for the money.